Hey y'all, Matt here with another Bible study video. Today we're talking about one of my favorite minor prophets in the Old Testament, and that is Jonah. Uh, but before we get into this video, I just want to remind you, if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel and share this, uh, this channel with your friends so that we can try to, to spread this mission, to spread the gospel. Uh, but back to Jonah. So Jonah is a book that we're often taught in kids church and when it's taught in kids church a lot of times it's really watered down and it takes a lot of the theological significance out of it. Um, if you went to kids church or you read a children's Bible typically what you would see about Jonah is that God approached this prophet named Jonah and told him to go to a city called Nineveh to basically preach repentance to these people. Um, in response to what God told him to do Jonah decided to, to run from God and to go to a port where he got on a ship in Tarsus and uh, he went out to sea to try to get away from this mission. He was going the opposite direction from Nineveh. And so by doing this, um, basically God sent a big storm and um, the, the people on the ship got scared. They were terrified. They started praying to God and Jonah basically came forward and he said, I'm the reason why I've disobeyed God and God sent this storm to punish me. And they actually throw him overboard. And once he goes overboard into the water, he's swallowed up in a, a great miracle and an act of grace by God, swallowed up into the belly of a big fish where he stays for three days before he finally repents. And uh, in another miracle, um, you know, God saves him from the belly of that fish and he ends up going on to Nineveh to, to preach the message of repentance that God told him to in the first place. So today what we want to address is something that's often overlooked. And once we get into this, you'll see why we don't typically teach it in kids church is why Jonah ran in the first place. Um, and to really understand this, what we need to do is to go back in time a little bit and study um, what the city of Nineveh actually was about. Um, the city of Nineveh was actually located east of Israel in the Assyrian Empire. And um, if you know much about world history and what happened in uh, like the uh, first and second kings, we see a lot of this stuff happening. Um, the Assyrian Empire was a very barbaric and violent um, empire that was very powerful. Um, they led a lot of military conquests. They were basically taking over everything that they possibly could. And um, in doing this, they didn't just invade countries and, you know, take their, their loot and, um, you know, enslave the people and move on. They were actually very, very violent and they uh, leaned a lot on intimidation tactics and fear when they went places. Um, and they did all of this basically in the name of their God to please their God. They thought that their God wanted them out and uh, taking over all of these other uh, lesser than nations. And so what we know about Assyria is when they invaded an area, typically what they would do, especially with the old king that was there, is they would very, very brutally attack them. Um, if we go back in their own history, we see all kinds of accounts of things that the kings did to the people that they invaded. Um, they would often flay them, which is basically skinning them alive um, and hang their skin up in order to basically be uh, as a demonstration of their power and their might and dominance over these people they were invading. Um, they'd cut off heads. Um, they would burn people alive. Often they'd cut off arms, hands noses, ears, even gouge out eyes. Um, and then once they killed people, a lot of times they put their bodies on display, either by hanging them up on the walls of the city, on the gates, or even impaling them on sticks. And um, so in this big um, display of their military might and their power and their violence, you know, it, it caused a lot of fear in the nations around um, Assyria and Nineveh especially. And Israel was no different. Um, Israel was threatened by Assyria multiple times. And at one point in history, uh, Israel's even paying tribute to Assyria to try to keep them from invading, which, which doesn't work. Um, even though the prophets tell Israel that they need to turn to God instead of trying to buy them off or making military alliances, they, they fail to do so. And they're eventually, you know, invaded by the Assyrians and captured anyway. But, um, you know, God is basically telling Jonah that he needs to go to these barbaric people and he needs to, re you know, preach this message of repentance to them so that they can be forgiven. 
And so I don't know about you, but knowing all of this, knowing about, you know, the pressure that the city of Nineveh was putting on Israel, on Jonah's own people, and, um, you know, the very violent nature and very violent tendencies they had, I don't know that I would have wanted to do it either. Um, But that is basically why, um, you know, Jonah ran from the mission. Um, He knew what was going to happen. And so uh, he takes off running, and once he is saved, he goes on to Nineveh anyways, and he preaches probably the worst sermon in in biblical history, you know, recorded in the Bible. All he said was, yet 40 days and Nineveh shall be overthrown. He preaches this awful sermon. It's only like five words in the ancient language. And what we see is um, all of the people in Nineveh believe in God, including the king's Um, It says even the cows are saved and repent. And so the kings and all the people in Nineveh actually turn. They repent from their violent ways for a brief time. They'll eventually turn back and face God's judgment themselves by the Babylonians. But um, just like Jonah feared, um, they, they turned to God's mercy and they accepted his grace. And because of that, they escaped the punishment that Jonah thought they deserved. And so for us, this is very, very important because it teaches us a lot about how we should deal with our enemies. Because I don't know about you, but but I have people that I, I may not necessarily get along with. They may have wronged me in the past, but um, you know, none of them have done anything near to me what the Assyrians did to uh, the people in this time period. And yet God came and he forgave them anyways. And once they repented, he, he gave them grace. And... Um, you know, there's no difference in God giving them grace and then giving me grace. You know, we're both sinners. Um, neither one of us deserve that grace that he gives us. It's a free act of, uh, you know, it's a free gift that he gives us. You know, nothing that we do earns it. But uh, we're never too far away to accept that. If, if the Assyrians and the people in Nineveh could accept that, you know, gift of grace by repenting and surrendering to the Lord, none of us are too far from it either. So I want to encourage you, if you haven't surrendered your life to Christ, make that decision today. Surrender your life, repent from from your old ways, and lean into Jesus. Uh, Get a Bible, start studying Scripture, and just ask Him for forgiveness. Ask Him for His grace, for His love, and His mercy, and for Him to forgive your sins, and He will. But um, until the next video, I just want to encourage you. um, Just stay in the Word. Um, If you miss a day, that's okay. Just keep digging in the next day. But um, until the next video, I will see y'all later this week. I love y'all. Blessings.